It's a black dude with no shoes on the stage right now. How's everybody doing tonight? How you guys feeling? Yeah? You doing good? Smoking? How you doing? Feeling good? <laughs> Wait, not everybody speaks English. I'm just saying, how you doing? You feeling good? Alright, my bad. I didn't want to disturb. You know, people having conversations, I got a mic, you know. Don't, don't feel obliged to look at me while I'm talking. I'm just a man with a mic. That's all I am. I just got here yesterday, uh, flew into Bangkok, and uh, when I went to Bangkok, the lady at the front desk was like, all the trains to Chiang Mai are uh, done running. And I was like, bullshit. So I went to the train station, and I asked the man, do you guys have any more trains going? He was like, yeah, but we ran out of tickets like two minutes ago. I was like, oh, you just ran out of tickets like two minutes ago? <laughs> okay, I see you, fam. So I walk over to the side, and I'm peeping game, right? This white dude walks up and asks the same question. He's like, I need to go to Chiang Mai and get a ticket right now. He goes, we have standing tickets only. That means you'll be standing on a train for 13 hours going to Chiang Mai. So I overheard this. I walked up. I was like, hey, man, let me get a standing ticket. He's like, oh, you heard that. He didn't say that because I don't think he really spoke English. But the face he, he gave me was, oh, you just heard me tell this white dude you have a standing ticket. So I guess I got to give you a standing ticket. So it gives me a standing ticket, right? So now I'm playing musical chairs on the train. I had to move like at least six times. I would sit down, like a Thai family would walk up with the kids and kind of look at me. But I'm like a big black dude, so they kind of like walk off and get the conductor. The conductor will come back and be like, ah, you again. Yeah, you got a standing ticket, you got to stand. I moved like six times, finally it worked out. It's amazing. Um, I'm the only black person in this room. That's great. <laughs> My man. Let's do it. Funny part about that is I didn't realize I was stop black. Stop finish. No, no, no. Oh, stop finish. Why are we stopping and finishing? <laughs> uh, funny thing about that though is uh, I didn't realize I was black until the fourth grade. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting in class and uh, my teacher was talking about Harriet Tugman and at the end of every sentence she would look at me as if I knew the rest. She'd be like, Harriet Tugman brought black people through the underground. I'm like, I don't know, I'm in fourth grade. Stop looking at me, lady. And finally my friend Ryan Gordon was like, hey man, she's looking at you after every question because she wants to like, you're the only black person in the room, and she feels like you would know the answer. I was like, oh, okay. I'm black. So I figured that out. Fantastic. You, it looks like you have a question. Oh, yeah, this keeps hitting me in my face. Too big for this mic. Too big. Oh, man. Pie. Crazy place. Crazy little hippie town. I love it here. I just rode a motorbike for the first time. A little scooter. That's a thing. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> you guys go fast, man. Like my friend here, he was like speeding away. Every five minutes, he would hit me up on Facebook with like a Google map imagery. <laughs> like, yo, I'm over here. I'm like, yo, man, you just crossed like three bridges. I can't do it. I can't do it. Ah, dating nowadays is a catch 22. I uh, keep finding these 22 year olds. <laughs> And then they leave me, man. They always want to move like five miles outside of my radius. And when I use my dating apps, I put it on a one mile radius, so anything outside of that is too far. There's new apps out there in the market. There's this new one called Soul Swipe. It's a, it's a dating app for black people. The amazing thing about Soul Swipe is you know if you see any other race of people using it, they down for black people. I like that. You should too. I recently got on J-Swipe, which is a dating app for Jewish people. And uh, I put in my bio that I'm Orthodox. I met this Jewish chick over at Starbucks recently and she was like, what, you're an Orthodox Jew? I was like, oh, that's what Orthodox meant? I thought it meant boxing. <laughs> what? This is horrible jokes. That's a terrible joke. Happen. I like that. I like that. Ah. Uh, Virtual reality porn, who's seen it? Nobody? Not yet. All right, it's a new thing, it's coming out. It's like in San Francisco and LA right now. It's probably in other parts of the world. 
but it's virtual reality porn. So basically, you put on these goggles, right? And uh, it's like porn in 3D, you know, surround sound, everything. I just realized, though, while looking at one, um, today's generation of kids is going to be the first generation of kids, like, to be caught jacking off and not know that they just got caught jacking off. You know what I mean? Like, they'll have on the goggles and, uh, like, mom's going to walk in the door, you know, psh, oh my God, Timmy, what are you doing? But he's not going to hear it because you got on the surround sound headphones. He's not going to see it either. He's going to keep beating his knee. <laughs> And like, what, what can moms do after that? It's not like she can touch them. I mean, that's child molestation in the act. Find them, take a video, and put it on YouTube. Get some views. Give them a Tide Pod in the act. That might work. Damn, it's a quiet room. I like that. I really do. Fantastic stuff. Black people have been fighting for our rights for a long time, man. For some reason, we don't ever want to use them. I've noticed this. Like Rosa Parks, for example. She uh, fought for my right to sit on the front of the bus. But I never sit in the front of the bus. It's, it's, it's the weirdest thing, man. Like I live in Los Angeles, and there's this thing in, in Los Angeles where like, if you didn't bring your wallet that day, you could just step in the side door, was like in the back of the bus, and sit down. And every time I do, I'm just there with the rest of the black people. Enjoying all the leg room, occasional hand jobs on a Sunday night. It's amazing. Yeah, I really like this layout, man. It's like I'm looking at you guys, but I can't see you. It's like all this crazy stuff. What's up? How you guys doing? Ooh, dangerous. I've always wanted to be a rapper, but um. I'm scared of getting tattoos on my face. I feel like that's something you need to do to be a rapper nowadays. I'm actually scared of needles. I'm a needle phobic. That's not how you say it, but that's how I that's how I say it. Every time I get a blood test from the doctors, you know, get the needle in the arm, I faint. I'm a fainter. So uh probably shouldn't be a rapper. That's all I'm saying. I was talking to my grandpa the other day, right? And uh, I was on my phone. And my grandpa was like, you know what, Sonny Boy, your generation relies too much on technology. I was like, nah, grandpa, your generation relies too much on technology. Then I unplugged his life support. <laughs> I plugged it back in though, that's my own. I play too much. Oh, you know what? I think I'm done. I think I'm out. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna leave you with this one last thing. I just gotta tell you guys, this is my roommate in Los Angeles right here. And uh, he came out the shower one time and he was like, you know what the greatest thing about taking a shower is? Taking a shower after not taking a shower for three days. I was like, hold up, homie, you my roommate. You gotta be taking showers every day. You know what also feels great after three days? What? Wiping your ass. <laughs> okay. You should do that. I'm out. I'm Emmanuel Wright. Y'all been lovely.